Want to learn how to get a business analyst job? What a business analyst job description is in the first place? Business analyst salary, business analyst interview questions, how to put together a business analyst resume, and overall how to become a business analyst. So what is a business analyst? In a previous video, we talked about ethical and social implications of being a business analyst. And I mentioned in that video that I make a deep dive video that goes into ethical frameworks, eight specific ethical frameworks that can help guide your business interactions with your stakeholders, so here we go. And if you stick with me all the way through, I promise that number eight will be a bit of a surprise. All of the other seven are ethical frameworks that work in and out of business. The eighth one looks like it was created specifically for business situations and more of a pragmatic approach, so let's get started. So what is an ethical framework? Well, ethical frameworks for businesses provide a systematic approach to ethical decision-making and guide individuals and organizations in a business analysis capacity and other roles as well toward the right course of action in a given business situation. Uh, the frameworks offer a set of principles and values that we try to adhere to when working with our customers and with our colleagues as well. And when facing ethical dilemmas in business, meaning I could choose this decision or this decision, what are the pieces that I should take into account when making the decision of which path to take? So starting off with our first ethical framework, it is utilitarianism. So utilitarianism is a consequentialist ethical framework, meaning it focuses on consequences of actions or decisions being taken. It focuses on maximizing overall happiness or the utility for the greatest number of people. So. It's a framework that relies on which decision will make a particular process the most useful for the most number of people or make the most number of people the happiest. It involves weighing potential outcomes and the consequences of the different actions that would lead to those outcomes. And this is what's being used in utilitarianism to determine the morally right course of action. If you apply this to business, utilitarianism may involve evaluating the impact of different decisions on various stakeholders, such as employees in your own organization, customers outside your organization, shareholders for the company, and the broader community. So if you're working for a large publicly traded company, these decisions could be very different than if you're working for a smaller company because the shareholder interest comes into play. As an employee in an organization, you might feel like all the executive decisions should be based on happiness of the employees, but in a large publicly traded organization, that is one of several facets that leadership needs to take into account when making a utilitarian-based ethical decision. Ethical framework number two in business is deontology. So deontology emphasizes adhering to moral duties, principles, or rules. Uh, it places importance on inherent right or wrong of an activity or an action rather than the consequences of that action. So it doesn't matter so much what would happen as a result of my action, but it matters more whether what I'm doing is inherently right or wrong. Manuel Kant's categorical imperative is a good example of deontological ethical frameworks. And in that one, Emmanuel focuses on the universal moral principles that should guide decision making. In business, if we apply this there, de deontological ethics may involve respecting the rights of employees, acting with honesty and integrity, and fulfilling contractual obligations. In your projects, you may have statements of work or contracts that outline particular behaviors or objectives that need to be met legally. And so as part of that, this deontological approach would seek to fulfill those particular obligations and any other ones that talk about the idea of right and wrong. So you may run into, and I have in my experience, run into situations where customers bring up questions that neither sales nor services have taken into account when putting together the scope of work, but that makes sense from an end user perspective. So you may say it was not in our scope to give you a fully functioning coaching workflow just to install it and then we would build upon it in the future based on additional discussions with you in a second project about what your coaching topic should be. 
and the customer may respond by saying, we've never used your project before, so we didn't know to even ask that question. And of course, we're not under the impression we get an incomplete product. And so in situations like that, it can cause an ethical dilemma that a deontological approach may be able to solve in terms of maybe they're right, maybe if we can get a commitment for future work from the customer, we throw this one in free of charge to keep them happy given that it was sort of a subjective decision to be made. So if you've stuck with me this far through the video, I hope you're getting some great value and wanna be notified every time I drop the next piece of training in this series, go ahead and subscribe to How To Be A Business Analyst below and click that bell button for all notifications. Once you've done that, drop me a comment in the comments below letting me know that you subscribed and I'll go ahead and try to answer all of those comments personally. Ethical framework number three in business is virtue-based ethics or virtue ethics. And so virtue ethics focuses on developing and embodying virtuous character traits like honesty, like fairness, like compassion, like integrity. And so just like within your own organization where you would take compassion on someone who had a death in the family who, or who may be sick and can't work through the particular project, deliverable commitments that they made. You wanna do the same thing on the customer side. They're human beings, just like your colleagues in your organization are. And we wanna take compassion into account for those human beings as well. So rather than focusing solely on individual actions and consequences, virtue ethics relies more on the overall character and moral development of individuals and organizations. So if you apply this concept in a business context, virtue ethics may involve promoting ethical leadership. So leading from the top down in an ethical manner, such that all of the individual contributors are using these approaches with their customers and having a customer centric or customer experience based approach, fostering a culture of integrity and also emphasizing value driven decision making rather than the bottom dollar. So customer experience is a hot topic these days. It's becoming more and more vital to provide an excellent customer experience with our products and services. And so I think that virtue based ethical frameworks would help in this regard. Ethical framework number four is rights-based ethics. So these are human rights. Um, it emphasizes the importance of respecting and upholding the basic human rights that we're all aware of and, and those liberties. So in business, if we apply this particular framework, it would entail fair treatment, equality, equal employment opportunities, fair wages for folks, whether they be hourly or salaried, non-discrimination of employees, non-discrimination also of customers and stakeholders. Again, we're all human beings and all have the same human rights. And it also involves respecting privacy as well, freedom of speech, safe and healthy work environments. These are just a few examples of fundamental human rights that we'd want to uphold during all our business practices, both within our organization with our own colleagues and with our customers and stakeholders, if we're using a rights-based ethics approach to our ethical framework. And frankly, I don't understand how you'd get away with not using a rights-based approach. I would think that rights-based ethics is the baseline that every other framework should sit on top of and build upon. So rights-based ethics, the fourth ethical framework that you can apply during your business analysis situations. Hey, so one more quick tip for you. If you're thinking, hey, I have a great career too where I can share all these insights on the internet. How do I do that? I have a couple great links for you in the description below. One is Make Money Matt, who teaches how to monetize your skills and abilities online better than almost anybody I've found. And the second one is Teachable, a platform where you can create your very own online courses. Check the links out in the description below. Ethical framework number five is justice and fairness. So justice-based frameworks focus on fairness, equity among all groups and all people, distribution of resources and opportunities. So, you know, Jim Smith gets two, so Jim Smith gets two monitors to do his work every day. Sally May should also get two monitors to do her work every day. Um, they aim to ensure decisions and actions are impartial, treating individuals equitably and without bias. And again, if you want to learn more about all the different types of bias, and there's many, I'm doing a deep dive on all the types of bias coming up shortly on this channel. 
Justice and fairness includes a couple of different subtopics. So one is distributive justice, which is fair distribution of resources, procedural justice, which is fair decision-making for all groups and all individuals, um, corrective justice, which is rectifying injustices in a standard way across different groups. All of these are central to justice and fairness approaches to ethical frameworks. In business, justice and fairness are vital, right? They entail fair pay, non-discriminatory practices, and equitable treatments of all employees, and again, external stakeholders as well. As a business analyst, you may be working with internal stakeholders sometimes and external stakeholders in other times, but you wanna keep in mind these particular principles of these ethics-based frameworks as you navigate through the journey of your business analysis career. Ethical framework number six is sustainability and environmental ethics. So why is this important? Well, sustainability and environmental ethics are very important because they highlight the importance of responsible stewardship of our natural resources, of our environmental preservation, and long-term sustainability. This framework considers the impact of the business activities that we're doing on the environment, the future of our environment, and sustainability of our environment, um, and all the ecosystems therein, right? If you look at companies like Tesla that's going crazy right now with the electric car revolution, people really care about sustainability and taking care of the environment. And part of your business practice should be ensuring that you do no harm in that particular respect. I mentioned in a previous video that I work for a company where we gathered thousands and thousands of documents from our customers and digitized these things. So we didn't have such an impact on deforestation and these sorts of things. So you may think that your work has no impact on sustainability in the environment, but I feel that if you dig deeper, you'll find that there are ways that you can make an impact in that regard with efficiencies, even if it's in using less electricity. I used to have my lights for these videos turned up to 80%. I have them on 10 right now and you can see my face just fine. So things like that that you may not have considered before, you should consider as part of your business analysis, sustainability and environmental impact. So as I go through providing all this detailed knowledge for you on this channel based on my years of experience, I didn't want all these videos scattered all around to get away from you. So I decided to create a mini course that provides a checklist of 10 essential skills any aspiring business analyst needs to know. And I decided to provide it to you for free. So check the description below on 10 essential skills any aspiring business analyst needs to know. Click that link in the description below and grab your free digital download. Enjoy. Ethical framework number seven is corporate social responsibility. And so that refers to voluntary actions taken by businesses to integrate social and environmental concerns into their operations and contribute positively to society. So a social concern may be equal pay for females and companies I've worked for have taken that into account as part of their ethical strategy in terms of ensuring that positions are available equally across all groups, gender-based or otherwise. And these are things that would even extend beyond legal obligations. So even though there are equity-based policies and laws in place, some companies go beyond that to create specific programs for, let's say, technology learning for younger girls or things like that, where no law would ever compel you to put a program like that in place, but it is something of immense value if you do. And a lot of companies are doing things like that these days to have a particular impact in terms of corporate social responsibility. So not corporate legality, so to speak, but social responsibility, where you have corporations that wield lots of power and can use that power for good to make positive impacts on the world. And as I mentioned, if you stick with me all the way to the end, you would get a surprise eighth ethical framework. So all the ones we've talked about so far had sort of a meaning outside of the business context. And then I gave you how you would apply that in the business context. This eighth one was created primarily in a business sense, and it is known as identify, consider, act, reflect, and I gathered this research from the Ohio University online master's website, which I'll give you the link to below. You should check it out. They have some incredible information on that website. Again, Ohio University online master's talks about the identify, consider, act, and reflect ethical framework. So what are the pieces? Well, those are the four pieces. First, we identify. 
And so we're identifying each scenario from an ethical standpoint as a means of finding the best course of action for that scenario. It's achieved by asking a set of questions. So this is what business analysts do, right? We ask questions, we ask open-ended questions such that our stakeholders are talking much more than we are talking because we're there to learn, we're not there to dictate. And so the identify step in this particular process leverages the business analyst abilities and experience in asking questions. And so we wanna know which ethical principles are at stake in this situation. Is it a customer who's giving us proprietary information? Is it a customer who's giving us data where we can enforce a particular workflow where we force our end users to acknowledge that what was discussed in a coaching program was in fact what they feel was discussed because it's a union setup where that's not allowed? Um, or who will be directly affected by these decisions? And lastly, what are some important facts and where do the conflicts of interest lie? So part of the business analyst responsibility is to identify potential conflicts of interest among different groups and to try to bring everybody to a negotiation or a center point where we can provide a solution that works well for everybody while trimming off all the pieces that may cause conflict for important groups. So next we consider, and what this means is we take our time and everything we've identified to consider what the path forward may be. Uh, we can consider additional perspectives. As far as I've gone through my career and my management and all this, I never take it upon myself to think I know everything. I'm constantly talking to folks on my team who are individual contributors and not managers or leadership to get their perspective as well. Hierarchy only takes you so far. It only means so much when you want to gather additional perspectives. Um, human beings are competent, they're smart, and you should talk to all of them to get different points of view, even if you decide to go a different way. Third step is act. So that's done by following through with the actions that have been decided on in the first two steps. So if you need higher authority to take these actions, you go up the leadership scale and get your authority. But I've always enjoyed most in my positions, autonomy. So I try to put myself in a position where autonomy is respected and I can make decisions on my own without having to get permission for everything. But sometimes there are compliance situations and you have to. And then finally, with this ethical framework, you reflect. So you reflect on what went well, what went poorly, and what you might be able to do better next time. This allows for a greater understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of team members, leaders, stakeholders, and how to work around all that in hopefully all the future projects that you'll have succeeding together with these groups of people. Finally, it's important to note that these ethical frameworks do intersect and overlap in some certain areas, so you may not find yourself working just within one of them, but within a combination of some of them, and their application can vary depending on your business and what type of products and services you're providing and what level of experience your stakeholders have in working together with you to solve these sorts of business problems that they're encountering. So ethical frameworks provide a structured approach to decision making, to helping businesses navigate complexities in installing solutions that meet particular business problems that they're facing in their organizations and in their industries. But again, you must, as a business analyst, be flexible to changing requirements and changing environments to be able to apply these ethical frameworks effectively for your stakeholders. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you learned a lot about ethical frameworks and how you might apply them as a business analyst. We'll see you again next time.